Hello, this is David Hilscher and this is Dissident Science News. This is the only news broadcast on the planet exclusively dedicated to news about critical thinkers working outside the mainstream. If you want to keep up with today's cutting edge scientists in physics and cosmology, then be sure to click on the subscribe button below and the little bell next to it and we'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Hey, sound effects. Yep, I got them. You know, and remember when I always say this stuff is so bad, I would just shoot me in the head? Well, there you go. Yes, I got a little box here. It's really cool. It's called the Stream Deck, and it gives us a little bit more fun during our broadcast so we can give people booze like that, which a lot of times we give mainstream, or we can give them a applause like that. And where I can shoot myself in the head because I can't take any more of this. The reason I've been away for a while is because I continue to get ready for a big up and coming conference. And, and you want to make sure you stay tuned to the very end of this video. Why? Because I'm going to tell you how you can watch the entire conference live streaming on YouTube. Yes, on our CMPS channel. You go to Chappelle Natural Philosophy and you will see our channel but i will tell you exactly the url you'll need to know so you can watch it so stay tuned but in the news is what we will start with right away and this is an article that popped up all week and of course if you put the uh, word einstein in the title it's you're going to be noticed and that's certainly no different here physicists use atomic clocks to test einstein's theory of relativity in a 14-year experiment a foundational thought experiment and einstein's theory of general relativity got its most precise confirmation ever by turning the entire earth into a laboratory monday physicists of the M M MIT, nit of uh and national institute of standards and technology published the results of a 14-year experiment that used some of the most accurate atomic clocks in the world to test a fundamental uh, fundamental principle in the theory of relativity the the results published in uh, nature physics offer the most precise confirmation of one of the more concepts of einstein's unified theory a uh, uh, unified theory of space-time and gravity the equivalence uh, principle the experiment involved tracking measurements of 12 atomic clocks located around the world from 1999 to 2014 and based on einstein's theory of general relativity the relationship between these measurements of the clock shouldn't change as the earth orbits the sun this is exactly what physicists found confirming that similar experiments that occurred in similar experiments that occurred over the years uh, basically they have atomic clocks that sit on the sit on the earth and then they try, see if they deviate if they deviate, then then something is different from Einstein's idea that all in all inertial frames, the physics acts the same. And they say the inertial frame of the Earth is the same. So therefore, these atomic clocks should not change. At the heart of Einstein's unified framework of space, time, and gravity is the equivalence principle, which states that a small reference frame uh, that in small reference frames, the force of gravity is almost entirely absent. Oh my gosh, is that what they're saying now? Well, I'll explain this to you. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I don't read this. I'll go crazy. You know what I say? But anyways, oh, my, my elbow disappeared. Okay, uh, this, re this realization allowed Einstein to reconcile the theory of special relativity, which only makes sense when gravity is taken out of the picture with, with Newton's law of gravity. The result is a new theory known as general relativity. So what's this all about anyways? Well, this is the, about trying to fix special relativity with general relativity. So of those who don't know anything about this, well, special relativity says two things. One, that the speed of light has to be measured as C, no matter how fast you are moving in relationship to the light source. So if you're on the train and you turn on the light, you're going to measure C. If you're on the side of the train turn on, and that light on the train is moving, you're still going to measure C, and therefore your time is going to have to slow down. Theirs is going to have to speed, or it's their speed up. Mass increases, length contracts. Well, the problem is they don't see that. They're not seeing that because in particle accelerators they don't see mass increasing. And with the time with the time and the clocks, they also say, well, is the reference point on the Earth with the twin experiment where one twin stays on the Earth or is it in the spaceship with the other twin who's accelerating away from the Earth? Well, the way they try to resolve this is to say, well, you have to special relativity doesn't work unless you put in general relativity. And then everything makes sense. Even though if you look at special relativity, which is, is a theory in itself, should be have uh, ha be consistent, consubstantial as 
Mr. and Dr. Um, Glenn Borkert says it's got to be self-consistent and it is not so they try to save it with general relativity that's why they say well when you uh, it says that's why which only makes it says Einstein it says right here the realizations allowed Einstein to reconcile the theory of special relativity which only makes sense when gravity is taken out of the picture that's what they're saying what special relativity doesn't work if you don't if you include gravity now think about all this stuff it is absolutely nuts and this is the only way they've been able to solve special relativity and, and from just throwing the whole thing out wholesale is because general relativity saves it but then even general relativity has problems we won't talk about that but that's why I chose this article because me who, who have looked at this for many years sees this and it goes eh, red flag and I thought I'd bring this up to you so that when you're a critical thinker that you don't just rip rip by this there's a lot of stuff going on behind there which they don't they don't really explain at all okay it says but what does this have to do with atomic clocks it says in the recent experiment it basically considered the entire earth as a free falling elevator and a bunch of atomic clocks spread around the earth as a drop phone and and wallet so they're just giving you this example of the uh elevator where you know you're you're in the elevator and if it's free falling you feel like you're in weightlessness oh i must be out in space but no you're on earth because the weightlessness comes from it's all this relativity stuff it says on this view the earth is a free fall around the sun and the entire planet is considered a local frame okay so you got a local frame that's the earth but what if the local frames where the one atomic clock is and then there's another atomic clock and there's those frames are different they're tra traveling in different directions they're traveling at different speeds but they said oh we consider the earth to be the same because it's a gravitational one there's some kind of truth there for those of us who work outside and have our own models you can sort of say okay you know uh, I sort of get that but again this is all to try to save special relativity so let's keep going get some more the confirmation of Einstein's general relativity is the most precise measure ever they say they did it for seven years in 2007 and they're gonna even do more accurate measurements in the future but what's this all about well I call it all about nothing and if you remember the talk I did uh, the news I did last week and the article I looked at it was talking about maybe there's problems uh, in physics that are fundamental and that we get for instance fall in love and seduced by our math and this person was talking about loss of math how how beauty leads physics astray and and uh, uh, seduced by the equations might be beautiful or elegant, but they lack obvious connections to the real world. Remember all that? He says, I can't believe the once vulnerable, once venerable profession has become, she, she said, what, has, what it has become. Theoretical physics used to explain what was observed. He says, now they try to, here's what they say, now they try to explain why they can't explain what was not observed. So, it's now become they're getting so convoluted in their experiments that they talk about a lot of talk about nothing well this is different from what i just read right you if you're following it you go dave that's not the same it isn't but it's reminded me this at a higher level so i put came up with the science of nothing happened the theory says nothing should happen and nothing happened so the theory is proven once more <laughs> um boo boo but our analysis of this how is that Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate my studio audience, which consists of a bird, my daughter on her cell phone, uh, with earphones, not even listening to me, and the guy outside with the lawn uh, leaf blower. So let's go forward and get to real critical thinkers instead of, but I hope you enjoy these little journeys because they're a lot of fun to take apart. How we critical thinkers see this, because we've been doing this for many decades, and I hope I gave you insights that you didn't know about. Look up that special relativity, general relativity stuff. You want to make your head spin? Look it up. Okay, well, what happened this past week? Well, we actually had another video come out today, but that's for, the, that's for next week. But Particle Guru came up. My father came up, and he continues to put out a video probably about once a week, and this one on the battery. That is, in our model, well, we have the G1 particle. Well, it's real simple, our model, if you want to know, because he and I are working on it ourselves. Anything that goes C is considered to be the same particle, and that's electricity, light, gravity, all those things, and the electron. Uh, so all those things are together. So when we're looking at it, we need to know how a battery holds the G1 particle. So the G1 particles electron g1 particles the photon g1 particles the uh is uh gravity uh g1 particle magnetic fields they're all the same particle they're going the speed of c they just go in different you know, loops and all that stuff well he's explaining this stuff with the particle theory that he and i are developing so you don't want to miss it it is a lot of uh, great fun he puts a lot of thought and time into these slideshows and it's a lot more organized than you know who 
not used to my uh, uh, sound effects. Yes, that's weird. Okay, let's keep going. Well, another person, Jeff Yi, and the energy wave theory. Love his theory. I love his model. Talks about what is mass, an explanation of the property of matter and its relationship to waves by Jeff Yi. You definitely want to subscribe to his channel and watch this. Uh, here's just part of it, a principle. Uh, he's talking about waves as a Doppler effect. Wonderfully explained, wonderfully uh, incredible mathematics, just overall a complete and wonderful theory. And what do we have? Applause for him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Subscribe to that channel. He's coming out every couple weeks with a new uh, video. Also out there, of course, is the is one of my favorite groups of critical thinkers, a big group, the Electric Universe, which continues to grow, and it talks about comet jets are electric. What? Yes, this is great news for those people in the Electric uh, Universe who believe that the electricity, elect, the, uh, the electric part of the universe, universe is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful uh, uh, force in the universe. And if that's something that, that appeals to you, you should subscribe to them. 110, almost 110,000 subscribers subscribe them. You got almost 20,000 views a day on their videos. Take a look at this one. Very interesting stuff. And again, I'm all for 100% supporting uh, any critical thinkers out there who are trying to give a better model than the, than the uh, standard theory. Is that easy? <laughs> Anything's better, but in fact, they have some really great science going. If you like them, subscribe to them. Again, the link's down below. So let's keep going. There's more videos that came out, and this one is by, oh, I don't even have him there. That is by Dr. Alexander Unsiker, the Machian, Machian, M-A-C-H-I-A-N, the Machian. Look him up on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel, and he talks about can artificial intelligence advance uh, physics. Yeah, they have all this data, incredible big data physics. And is it the case that artificial intelligence can solve it? It's one of my areas, artificial intelligence and natural language, perhaps human language and computers. But can we look at it as big data and solve it that way? But the problem is, can we get any equations out of it? Or will it just say patterns that we won't know what the heck they mean? But that's a really interesting video. You want to take a look at that came out this past week. And another one is the uh, our Saturday morning video conferences and this is held every saturday in unless it's not you can look on our, our, our website and those are great discussions because you can join in you can go on board watch it go in you can talk with them if it's just uh if you don't you don't have to have a video uh feed you can join in the conversation normally they have somebody talk about something this was called uh this was talking about truth and science and one of the one of my fellow YouTubers out there, Draft Science was there, bringing up some very good points, making up some really great points. He and I got at it even, but it's all in great debating fun. I appreciate him coming on board and taking a look at our group, and you should too, because those conversations are lively and fun. And they're uh, moderated by Franklin Hugh. This one had a talk by uh, our Lifetime Achievement uh, award recipient. He's going to receive that at the end of this month, Dr. Uh, um, Bill Lucas, one of the great, great critical thinkers of our generation. Well, let's keep going forward. And another video, and this is by the Sky Scholar. This guy is growing by leaps and bounds. He's got almost 5,000 followers. I like his channel. He talks really more about the sun, but he has been putting on one of the great critical thinkers, and I hope to have an uh, interview with him, Unsker. He's already given me the green light to do that, but I've been busy with the conference. But this guy, this is Stephen Crothers, who is the black hole man for critical thinking, the critical thinker for black holes. He has gone through score uh, uh equations for black holes and have ripped them apart. If you haven't seen what he's done, you can see uh, a number of these videos on the Sky Scholar. Uh, hats off to Sky Scholar for doing these series. Great series. You want to take a look at that. And I get some email chains, and those email chains are offer often some of the best discussions. I wish they would go to our forums, forums.naturalphilosophy.org, and do them there so that they're recorded. But, you know, people do what they do. And this one's about redshift. And why is it so important, redshift? Well, the mechanism for redshift will tell us whether the Big Bang is wrong or right. The, the critical thinkers outside of mainstream, they're all pretty much in agreement that light does not travel infinitely forever at the speed of C, that there is going to be something going on to make that light get tired or something like that. And therefore, 
the redshift we're seeing it's not because the universe is expanding it's just the nature of light of course the mainstream has no idea what the light is it a particle is it a wave they don't know other newer models like ours particle and a wave we know exactly my, my father solved it was has one solution to the particle wave duality but again why is the redshift important well it's fighting for the big bang which we pretty much have written off a long time ago it says here's here's an uh, I, I sort of hid the emails and their names so this is all anonymous uh perhaps i'm missing something of uh, in my understanding of your redshift me mechanism in which a photon forward scatters from from an elect uh, electron so that no blurring occurs if the photon scatters off a hydrogen atom in space then the forward scattering can be maintained both can maintain both energy and linear momentum conservation can be saved in in this three particle interaction but what happened with the observation of law in the mechanism with just two particles photon electron as far as I know there is no Feynman diagram for the mechanism in QED uh, uh, quantum electrodynamics that results in no blur so again look at what they're talking about they're talking about mechanisms for what light is and its interaction with matter this is critical thinking these are the people that are putting science forward that's why this whole channel exists and that's why dissident science news exists one of the emails had this paper listed in its abstract an explanation for cosmological redshift this is from 2009 2010 was published in physics essays 23 2000 you can look it up i'll have the link below but again they're talking about this this is what's happening why this is dissonant news because you don't see this because i get thrown on every email chain under the sun because of my work with all these people for many years and they said hey dave tell you know get this out there that's what I'm doing all right and of course we have our my, what I told you is come to fruition I'm going to tell you about two things one the new thing that's happening at our conference this year this is part of, of our banner that is going to be a vertical banner at our conference at the uh, walking people to come into the room and participate and this year's critical thinking conference which takes place at the nathan hale hall you can see that mansfield room from june 27th through the 30th we will be having a critical thinkers court yes we even have a gavel we have wigs we are going to have einstein newton and jurors and lawyers and a judge complete with wig and gavel and gown putting science on trial this is all being put together by bruce nappy a brilliant brilliant mind great friend one of the most active people trying to put and promote and get people's thoughts together and get those things mixing them up and he is from mit and he is doing an incredible job so we will have that streaming live as, as well as the entire conference how can you find that where can you go well here it is this is what you see you can go there now it's real easy live.naturalphilosophy.org that will you will land on our live streaming page you can see it says right now live stream offline and yes we are not broadcasting right now but we will be broadcasting we ask those who can to do a fifty dollar suggested donation we have actually a link to that which we have and will always uh, show you during the conference that you can actually help pay for uh, all the expenses that this this group is because we are not for profit group and if you don't have the money and can't pay it and you know I don't want to pay it you can watch it for free we're going to have chat there so we'll hopefully be able to answer a few of the questions of people who are participating from long distance we do have people from all around the world coming we have them coming from uh africa we have them coming from other continents in europe and we of course have people from the united states all at the university of connecticut at the nathan hale inn so i hope to see you there no matter where you are in the world and if you can if you got an internet connection and you have you can type in live.naturalphilosophy.org you can watch it live on our youtube streaming channel no not dissident science but from the john chappelle natural philosophy society again that's chappelle natural philosophy look it up on youtube and you'll go right to it 
Okay, and remember, this is Dissident News, so if you uh, want to send us Dissident News, please do so. Send it to news at dissidentscience.com. A link to something on the internet so we can take a look at a description of what it is. Make sure you, it will be interesting for a critical thinking audience. We like the CMPS. Do not accept stories involving UFOs, conspiracies, or religious subjects. We want to stick completely to science because we, in, we invite everybody, whether you are a creationist, an atheist, uh, or any other religion, you are welcome as long as you're talking science and we all talk science and of course if you want to be spotlighted on our channel you can send again to news at dissonantscience.com have a full work we need to get your full biography on our wikipedia tell us that we'll work with you and email us and we'll give you access to that and we need a recent photo of you because at least we want to to show people what you look like and remember i'm david e. hilster stay critical stay thinking i want you to be a critical thinker. I am your science therapist. Ciao for now.